All right, welcome back to the workshop. As you can see, I'm stood next to this giant box, which is my new bandsaw. This is a new Axminster bandsaw, and it's got so many new features to make it one of the best bandsaws on the market. So I'm gonna stop this intro. You're probably really keen to see the unboxing and see the new features, so let's get right into it. taken all the packaging off the bandsaw and looking at it already I can tell it's really well made. So at the moment the bandsaw is really heavy and before I add more weight to it with the cast iron table and the fence I'm going to make the mobile wheelbase so that I can try and lift the bandsaw onto that when it's at its lightest. So this is an Axminster heavy duty mobile wheelbase. I highly recommend getting mobile bases with your machinery especially if you're in a small workshop quite often I move my machines around if I need to pass a long piece of timber through or just changing the orientation of the machinery if I get a new one and because these are really heavy it's impossible to move them without the mobile wheelbase. So the bandsaw is fully set up and it is a beast. It is so heavy. I'm not sure if you could tell by the video, but it was extremely difficult getting it on the mobile wheelbase. This bandsaw weighs 220 kilograms, so you definitely need some help moving it. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna walk around the whole bandsaw, showing you all its features and what makes it such a good bandsaw. So, firstly, let's start off with the blade. The blade spins on two very heavy, very solid cast iron wheels and having really heavy thick bandsaw wheels really helps reduce vibration on the machine and helps you cut much thicker and larger stock because you've got the force behind the blade pulling the blade through the wood and you've got that sort of momentum. It's not going to slow down at all if you're cutting thick stock. Now Axminster to sell a wide range of bandsaw blades and you can get different levels of blades. Axminster to do a really good ground tooth blade which is extremely sharp and it will last a very long time. Axminster to also do package deals where you can buy five blades varying from one eighth of an inch all the way to an inch thick and also varying in TPI. So that's good value for money. I've got enough blades here to last me a very long time. Also, blade change on this machine is really quick because you've got a quick detensioning lever at the back, 
which you just lift up like that and you can pull the blade straight off and then put the new blade on and then you can put it right back into tension with just that lever. On my previous bandsaws you had to do a lot of fiddling at the top, loosening it and then it'll be difficult to find the right tension again. Also talking about tensioning the blade, there is a gauge at the back so you know how far you're tensioning so you don't go too far and uh, over tension the blade. And once you put a new blade in the bandsaw, you've got all the adjustments on the back to help you track it and centre the blade on the wheel. You've also got this nice window, so you don't need to peer around the front and try and guess where the centre is. This window, you've got a perfect view of the side of the wheel, and while you're spinning the wheel with your hand, you can turn this knob at the back and centre the blade. And finally, the last feature about the blade is probably my favourite, and that is the tallest bearing adjustment. You don't need any Allen keys to adjust the bearings. So while you're using the bandsaw, if you just notice the thrust bearing was a bit too far back or a bit too far forward, or the side bearings weren't close enough, you don't need to find your Allen keys and adjust it. You can just release that knob, turn it with your fingers and tighten it up again. It's so much quicker than a lot of other bandsaws. But if you did find something on the machine that you wanted to tighten up, or adjust like the fence or this knob on the side, there is a Allen key holder on the side, so Allen keys are easily at hand when you find an area of the tool that you need to adjust. I forgot to mention, if you want to learn how to accurately set up a bandsaw, then I've made a blade setup video, I'll put a card on top of the screen now, and a link in the description down below if you're interested. So the next thing I want to talk about is the table. First off, you've got a really nice work area. It's a large table and very thick, so it's going to absorb a lot of the vibration. Now the first thing you'll notice when you look at the table is its gold colour. Now that is a titanium nitrate coating. Now there's all the craze at the moment because that has two benefits. It's sort of like a lubricant. It leaves a really smooth surface, so the wood will glide across it really easily. But the main reason is it's a rust inhibitor. A lot of us are in garage workshops or barns outside which get cold and damp sometimes in the winter, so I know I have the issue with cast iron tops sometimes going rusty, but having this machine with this new coating to stop rust is amazing. So the next thing is the insert plate, which is really high quality. It's quick to remove and made from a very thick piece of metal. It's also got four levelling feet which you adjust with an Allen key, so the top of the insert plate will be perfectly level with the top of the table. It's also a good size, so you've got a nice opening here so you can see the bearings underneath when you want to adjust them. The next thing I want to talk about the table is when you're tilting the table. The adjustments on the back are so easy to use. My previous bandsaw had two knobs that you release and you had to lift the table yourself and sort of balance it at the right angle and tighten it below at the same time. So it's very difficult to get the perfect angle. But with this bandsaw there is a hand crank underneath exactly the same as this wheel to raise and lower the guide bearings. So I don't need to struggle trying to lift up the table. I just need to turn that wheel and there's also a piston on the side that helps lift up the table and lower it when you're doing that. But yeah, that hand crank underneath the table is a game changer and really makes it a lot easier to adjust the table. Now this style of fence I haven't seen on any other bandsaw and you will notice it looks very similar to an American style table saw fence. And that is because it basically is one. You've got this really nice T section here that rides along this rectangular tubing. And the great thing about this T section is you've got these adjustment knobs on all the sides here to really fine tune the fence to make it square in all the directions. And with this screw locking system, it pulls the fence in square on this bar and makes it so rigid. It's a lot stronger than a standard cam locking lever that you'd find on a fence. And this fence is not budging at all. And not forgetting the actual fence face, which is made from basically a very oversized, thick chunk of aluminium that has two settings. I got it at its highest setting at the moment for when you're doing resawing. You want a lot of surface area here to keep the wood stable. Or you can turn it on its side to have it at its lowest setting if you're running something small through the bandsaw or a piece of inlay that you want to get your hands a bit closer to the blade so you have some more control. So it's a fantastic fence and as you can see it glides really nicely. So another nice feature of this bandsaw is the dust collection. It's really good with dust collection because you've got two dust ports. You've got a dust port here which will collect most of the dust because it's right under the table and extracting all the dust from basically where it's being produced. And then you've got another port at the bottom for any dust that gets missed and drops to the bottom of the machine. That port at the bottom will collect all of that up. 
It's also really well enclosed underneath the table for two reasons, safety and also dust collection. The bearings are all covered and on the door you've got this face that you need to lower when you open it and that's going to help with dust collection. And as I open the door, you'll see the dust ball at the bottom there and this little opening here, you've got a section where you can put a piece of wood which you would have saw me cut and install and this kerf I cut just goes around the blade so any dust in the area will immediately get sucked up the tube instead of falling down because I put that piece of wood there. But if any sawdust stays in the gullet of the tooth and gets pulled down onto the wheel, there are two brushes here, one that is always rubbing on the wheel and that is to remove the sawdust and keep the rubber smooth so the blade is always tracking in the middle. And then you've got the second brush here that brushes the bandsaw blade as it gets pulled up to the top again and that is going to remove any sawdust that is in the gullet of the tooth. So if you've watched my previous machinery unboxing setup videos, you'll know I like to talk about the small details of the machine, like the handles. Now, Powermatic are known for making very high quality machines, and all the parts of the machine are really well made, like the handles, they'll always be sort of cast iron and chromed. Well, Axminster and Harvey have also done an extremely good job at that, and all the adjustments on this machine are cast iron and chromed and feel really high quality. Like the wheels to tilt the table and raise and lower the guide bearings. Even to open the doors, you've got this solid aluminium wheels which have a nice knurled edge, so it feels really good in your hand. The detensioning lever on the back has a really nice heavy chromed knob on the end. The tensioning lever on the top is also solid metal. So details like that really make the machine feel very high quality and that it will last a really long time. Now, even with the operating area of the machine, there are lots of features. You've got a standard on and off button, and you've got this dial on the side that turns it from break off to break on to the machine running. So when you want to run the machine, you want to turn that to run, but when you want to change the blade of the machine, you want to turn it to break off, because the brake is constantly on the machine to stop it from running, but when you're putting a new blade on and you want to track it on the wheel, you want to turn the wheels by hand, so turning the brake off will allow the wheel to run freely. So that's a very nice feature. Now this bandsaw even has a key lock. Now for me personally, I'm never going to use this, and if I had the choice I'd probably remove it. But this is an amazing feature if you're in an educational environment like a school or a university, or even do classes in your workshop and you don't want a student going up to a machine and turning it on. You've got this key so you can just turn it and lock the machine off so when you're not in the workshop or away from the machine no one will be able to turn the machine on. And then when you want to use the machine all you need to do is put the key in, turn it and then the machine will turn on. And it's quiet. Another nice feature of operating the machine is you've got this foot brake underneath. Now a lot of people assume that foot brakes are for machines that don't have a motored foot brake so once you've turned off the machine it continues to run like on a table saw or a bandsaw sometimes the blade continues to run so you can put your foot on this and slow down the blade to a complete stop very quickly but this bandsaw actually does have a brake so it stops within one and a half seconds So what I would use this foot brake for is not slowing down the machine because it slows down extremely quick anyway. What I would actually use it for is if you're handling a very heavy piece of wood or something quite unwieldy and long and you can't reach to turn off the machine, you can use this foot brake as an off button because there is a switch on it so you can just press down and the bandsaw will turn off. So you don't need to reach over to the off button every time because this foot brake also is an off button. Now there are a couple of accessories I highly recommend getting with this machine. The first one I've already mentioned is the mobile wheelbase. I think that is a must. And the second one is the UJK Precision Mitre Fence. Now a lot of machines come with a mitre fence but they're normally poor quality. So I'd rather not have a mitre fence than one I wouldn't use. But Axminster to sell this UJK Precision My Defence, which is extremely high quality and really well made. It's got an amazing fence with a stop on it, and it's got integrated preset angles, and they're all very accurate. So if you're into using a My Defence, then I highly recommend getting this one. So that is the bandsaw. I think I've covered everything. If I miss something that you want to learn about, then make sure you comment down below. I will reply to all your comments. 
I'm in love with this bandsaw. It is extremely solid and well built. There's no vibrations. It's really smooth running and powerful. It's an all around good bandsaw. Fantastic bandsaw actually. So if you were interested in getting it, I do highly recommend it. So if you did want to buy this bandsaw, there is a link in the description down below that will take you to Axminster's website. I'd really appreciate it if you use that link because that's an affiliate link and I'll get a small cut of your purchase with no extra cost to you. That just takes you to Axminster's website and they'll know I sent you. And talking about that, that affiliate link is always in the description of my videos. So if you ever want to buy anything from Axminster, I'd really appreciate it if you go through that link because it's a great way of supporting the channel and uh, it's no extra cost to you. So thank you in advance if you do use the link. And talking about supporting the channel, I just want to thank my patrons. I got two new patrons this week, Richard Scott and At Kuskoski. Thank you so much for becoming a patron. Your support is really helping out the channel. And I've already written your names on their little plaques and put them on the Patreon beam. I hope you're enjoying all the perks of becoming a patron. My last patron only video was part four that's free, part four of the timber store build where I showed you how I made all the shelving in there and all the racks for holding all the sheet material and the solid wood. So that was a really good video. If you want to get access to all my past patron only videos and all my future patron only videos plus early releases to the main channel videos and all the other perks of becoming a patron, anything is appreciated then all the information is down below. So yeah, thank to all my patrons for making this video possible. So I hope you enjoyed this unboxing. I can't wait to show you this machine in action in my future projects. And thank you also for sticking to the end of the video. And I will see you very soon for the next one. Bye.